You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, and all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. An early morning mist shrouds Lingayan Gulf in the Philippines as two men load a heavy chest into a ship's dory, drawn up onto the shore. Suddenly from the nearby jungle, a voice hails them. You! At that boat! What are you doing there? I say, you hear? See? Si. In the name of the Philippine Republic, I demand you identify yourselves. See, si, amigo, we will identify ourselves like this. Ah! You fool. You've killed a government agent. What else could I do? Anything but that. You've forgotten who arrived in Manila last night? But there can be no connection between him and this. Anything is possible, you idiot, with a man called X. <laughs> Believe me, Senor Thurston, the Philippine Ministry of Finance shall do everything possible to help you. Thanks, Senor Leone. That's liable to be a pretty big order. I know. The territory of Macau is Portuguese, 500 miles across the South China Sea near Hong Kong. We have no jurisdiction over it. Nor has the United States, but something's got to be done to stop the international black market in gold that's operating there. Mm, si, Senor. It is a constant threat to the efforts of your country to maintain a, a worldwide economic stability. What's more important, it means starvation for a lot of the people in this world. Now, the Bureau believes that the bulk of that black market is being supplied by Philippine gold. Gold that normally would be earmarked for the United States. Senor Thurston, we have reached the same conclusion. And something occurred this morning which may have a bearing on it. What was that? One of my men was killed at Lingayan Gulf. There were signs that a small boat had landed nearby. And uh, we found this upon the sand. Leone, that looks like a Chinese gambling ship. It is, senor. It is a marker that came from the Lotus Blossom, a notorious gambling hall in Macau. Uh-huh. Our agents tell us that the Lotus Blossom is operated by a woman known as Madame Hung Shang, who has an interest in every underworld activity in Macau. Including black markets in gold. What would your guess be, Senor Thurston? I'll let you know, Leone. When does the next plane leave for Hong Kong? Ah, uh, this is a pleasant trip to make by air. You will be in Hong Kong for some time, Senor Thurston? I'll have to let my business decide that, Dr. D'Amico. <laughs> Are you American or business man? Always with a nose to the grindstone. As a physician, I prescribe relaxation. The kind one can find in Macau. Oh? Uh -huh. See, I have a private sanatorium there in the northern hills. Secluded, quiet, overlooking the Camoans Garden. That sounds restful. And healthy. But then Macau has the healthiest climate in all Asia. You would be doing me a favor, senor, if you would visit me there. The daily steamer runs from Hong Kong. It, uh... Oh! Up your old tricks again, doctor. Oh, <laughs> senorita Burton... I did not see you on the plane. Don't let your surprise make you forget your manners, Doctor. A thousand pardons. Uh, may I present Mr. Thurston? Mr. Thurston, the famous Senorita Francis Burton. How do you oh, do? how do you do? Well, you were right, Doctor. This uh, is a pleasant trip. Thank you, Mr. Thurston. And now, Dr. D'Amico, this time your patient is going to write the prescription. It calls for you to take my seat in the rear of the plane while I talk to Mr. Thurston. Ah, uh -huh, Senorita Burton. Doctor's orders, Doctor. Uh, then what can I do but obey? Uh, until we meet again, Senor Thurston. And please remember, that invitation is always yours. Thanks, Dr. D'Amico. Adios. All right, Miss Burton. Why? Perhaps it's because you're the only presentable American on board. Oh, 
famous authors can write better lines than that. Oh? You've read my books? A couple of them. Undergro underworld Europe, Underworld Africa. They're good. Accurate and factual. Thanks. I tried to make them that way. That's why I'm going to Macau. An underworld Asia coming out? Yes. And the reason I picked Macau for research is the same reason I wish to speak with you. Oh? Dr. D'Amico was not entirely correct. Macau can be the unhealthiest place in Asia. Particularly for anyone who interferes with Madame Hung Chang's activities. Whether gambling, fishing, opium, or gold. Why tell me this? It's very simple, Mr. Thurston. Everything I've said about the danger of interfering with her goes double. If the man involved is the man called X. I am very sorry, sir. The steamer to Macau is already overcrowded. There are no cabin accommodations left. Then, um... I am very sorry, sir. Not even that will help you get a cabin. <laughs> what a dope. Turning down good American dollars like that. Pagan! Hello, Mr. Thurston. Pagan, what in the world ever brought you to Hong Kong? My uncle Ahmed. He told me about this black market and gold in Macau. So, when I tried to figure where you'd be, <laughs> where else? You mean, where there's gold, there's Zellerschmidt. And pretty lucky for you. Where else could you get a ticket for a cabin on that steamer? And practically for nothing. How much, Pagan? Believe me, it's a bargain, Mr. Thurston. Only $75,000. Ah. Chinese dollars. Oh, only $50 American money. Uh, is it a deal? I'll give you 10 bucks cash. You know something, Mr. Thurston? It's a deal. <laughs> Here's the cabin, Mr. Thurston. Good. Let's see if it's... Well... Mm -hmm. Has there not been some mistake, gentlemen? Or is it your custom to enter other people's cabins without knocking? Well, if it's a mistake, it's the luckiest one I've made in years. This is the cabin. Look, it's in the ticket, number 18. Number 18. Are you sure? Yeah. And that's what it says on the door. Then I must beg your pardon. It is I who have entered the wrong cabin... Please forgive me. I will leave at once. Forgetting something, aren't you? Forgetting? Yeah. The man with his hands sticking out of those drapes over the bunk. Oh, no. <gasps> Goodbye, Mr. Thurston. I, I just remembered that... Relax, I... Pagan. He can't hurt you now. Not doing me any good. Lying there, that, that sticker in his throat. It's a surgeon's scalpel. Well, miss? All right. I will tell you the truth. My name is Maurice. I am traveling to Macau for a group of wealthy Chinese investors. Frankly, it is to purchase gold for Madame Hongshang of the Lotus Blossom. After now, that makes sense. Go on. An appointment was made for me to meet her representative in this cabin. When I entered, he was lying there, just like that. I was about to leave and you walked in. That is all I know. Well? Selling me won't do you any good. You'll have to convince the captain of this ship. I do not think I care to do that at the moment, Mr. Thurston. Have you any objection? She's got a gun. Yeah. I believe my point is clear. I have no wish to inform the captain of this affair. Too bad. You're a little late. Come in, Miss Burton, huh? and bring the captain with you. Thanks for the invitation. Oh. Looks like a cozy party. Come on, Captain. You know, I reserved this cabin for the trip, and I just as soon not share it with a corpse. Can you do something about that? Indeed I can. Senorita, you are pleased to hand over that gun at once and consider yourself under arrest. Very well, Captain. Here it is. That's being sensible, Maurice. Unfortunately, you have not been the same, Mr. Thurston. Oh? There are two flowers, both with white blossoms that bloom in the wild places of the world. A sensible man would have chosen the sweetness of the lotus blossom rather than the poison of the deadly nightshade. This is the Praia Grande, Ken. Macau's main promenade. Your hotel, the Ascension, is at the end of it. You seem to know this town. Been here before? No, but I have friends who've told me about it. The same friends who told you about the man called X? <laughs> Ken, I met some strange people while writing my book about Europe's underworld. A few of them had information about things like that. For a prize. One of Pagon's relatives, no doubt. Or was it someone like 
Madame Hung Shang. Draw a blank there, Karen. I've never met anyone who's even seen her. Dr. D'Amico has made arrangements for us to meet. That's why her cabin was reserved for me on the steamer. D'Amico gets around, doesn't he? What do you mean? Wasn't his medical bag with your luggage in the cabin? That's right. He had no cabin and thought it would be safer than mine. What's wrong with that? Nothing, nothing. Unless a scalpel belonging in that bag has been misplaced. In somebody's throat. Uh, um. Oh, oh. Uh, hello, Mr. Thurston. Uh, back to the hotel so soon? All right, Pagon. Stop trying to steam open that radiogram and give it to me. Mr. Thurston, I was just making some tea and, and, and sort of fanning the steam away. Uh, mm. Could I help it if it loosened the envelope? Uh. Bad news, eh, Mr. Thurston? That depends on how you look at it. It's from Signor Leone. His answer to the one I sent from the steamer giving a description of the dead man. That was silly. Why should Signor Leone know anything about him? I don't know. Except that the message says, description that of Joseph Mattaglia, Philippine Treasury agent. Dead man, Filipino agent. Mr. Thurston, what's this all about, anyway? What are you doing here? That's top secret, Pagan. Oh? Some people would pay a small fortune to find that out. Huh. Uh, they would? Sure. Especially Madame Hong Shang, or even Dr. D'Amico. Uh, Mr. Thurston, now that I'm working for you again, don't you think I should know all about this? I don't know. There's no telling what some people might do if they found out I was here about the sale of gold. Gold? Yeah. Philippine gold. Mm. To be offered to the black market. <laughs> don't you worry, Mr. Thurston. I'll keep clammed up like an oyster. Well, I better be leaving. See you later, Mr. Thurston. Okay, Pedro. Okay. No, sir, Ken, it's your own darn fault. As long as you keep him in pocket money, Pagan will continue to hound you. You know I don't trust him. Why, for a few bucks, he'd double-cross his own grandmother. To say nothing of you. Chief, that's just what I'm hoping for, right now. Okay, okay, I give up. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? No, just check the files on that list of people. D'Amico, Maurice, Francis Burton, and Madame Hung Shang. Got it. Particularly the Madame. Nobody seems to know who she is, and... Wait a minute, Chief. Something wrong here. Someone just... Ken! Hey, what's going on there? What's happened? Can you hear me, Ken? Ken? Hello? Huh? You are a colleague of Mr. Thurston? Yes, yes. What's happened there? Who are you? My name is Maurice. Maurice? Yes. I just wish to tell you that you do not have to bother checking up on me. What? I can give you the information in one sentence. Never mind that. What's happened to Ken Thurston? That is the sentence. At the moment, he is very well taken care of by Madame Hong Shang. <laughs> Continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Ken Thurston is in Macau, attempting to halt the illegal flow of Philippine gold into the black market. Gold originally earmarked for the United States. While reporting to the chief, his phone conversation is interrupted by gunshots, and the beautiful Maurice informs the chief that Ken is in the hands of the infamous Madame Hung Shang. Now, some time later... Ken has regained consciousness in a sumptuously appointed oriental apartment. You are feeling better now, Mr. Thurston. I guess I'll do. What gives, Maurice? You are in my private quarters at the Lotus Blossom. Mm, so you're Madame Hung Shang. That is right. Are you surprised? Uh, not particularly. What went on back in my hotel room? Assassins were attacking you, Mr. Thurston. My men arrived in time to dispose of them. However, they were afraid you might shoot at them by mistake during the confusion, so they rendered you unconscious. Cautious little creatures, aren't they? Uh, what were they doing there, anyway? 
The captain of the steamer released me at once, of course. They accompanied me to your hotel. I was most anxious to discuss certain business with you. Concerning murder? Concerning gold. Oh. Particularly a certain shipment from the Philippines due to arrive in the morning. I wish you to secure it for me. What makes you think I'm tied up with anything like that? For money, one can secure almost any kind of information in Macau. Uh-huh. If you deliver the gold to me, you will be entirely safe here. If not? I see. How much time have I? Until dawn tomorrow. Well, generous, aren't you? Your answer, Mr. Thurston. I'll let you know, Maurice, at dawn. No fear, Mr. Thurston. I'm right at home handling the reins with, with a donkey in her harness. <laughs> Why, Jew? Pagan, how much did Madame Hung Shang give you to spill about me? Mr. Thurston, how could you possibly accuse me of such a thing? How much? I swear by the father of my father, Pagan? Mr. Thurston. A measly hundred bucks. But I didn't really tell her nothing. I'll bet. Well, here we are, Mr. Thurston. Some joint, eh? Yeah, Dr. D'Amico does all right for himself. Hey, how come if Macau is such a healthy territory, there's enough sick people for him to support a place like this? That's what I'm going to find out inside. If you've done your job. Job? What job? Selling me out to Dr. D'Amico, too. I am very pleased, Senor Thurston, at your quick acceptance of my invitation. I figured a little visit here might be helpful, Dr. D'Amico. A very wise decision, my friend. Uh, we can be quite comfortable here on the patio. Please, be seated. Thanks. And now, Senor Thurston, let us get down to business. That makes sense. What's on your mind? Philippine gold. Well, you've got a lot of company. Perhaps, but not competition. What makes you think so? I have a customer with a great deal of money. He spends it foolishly. So foolishly, he is willing to pay $51 an ounce for that gold. Hmm, quite a difference between that and the legal world ceiling of 35. Why does he do it? You know as well as I, senor, that gold is the only thing of value in the world today. I can think of a few others. Peace. The welfare of the peoples of the world. It is no time for abstract philosophies. Now, it has come to my attention that uh, you have a certain interest in these Philippine gold. In a way, yeah. Uh, and, uh, naturally, you wish to sell it to us. Oh, I'm afraid not. And why not? Price doesn't appeal to me. Then what price would appeal to you? Maybe those abstract philosophers. Well, goodbye, Dr. D'Amico. You are intending to leave now? Mm-hmm. Any objections? I regret to say I have. Sebastian! Si, senor. What the... Yeah. Uh... You see, senor, you will have to make up your mind here. And for your own sake, I would advise you to hurry, Mr. Thurston. Strange creature who's been tagging around after you. Oh, Pagan. He was spying on you and saw them carry you into that pagoda. He figured the information was worth something to me. And he was right. I could ask why. Don't. Not now. I've got to get away from here first. Come on, Ken. Well, the front way's no good. D'Amico's having a party. This is one of his guests that I managed to sneak out here. Oh. Well, let's see. What board is this place on the back? Gardens of Camones. An army could hide in that wilderness. Well, then we can. Yes. Come on. Hola! Who is there in the garden? Ken. I heard him. Answer, Eric, shoot! You know, I think he means that. And here, do this. Well, thanks. <coughs> Looks like I'll have to. Oh. 
Now, let's get out of here before D'Amico really gets mad. Okay, Francis. They've gone back into the house. You can talk now. Talk, Kim? Yeah. You were going to explain your rescue act, remember? Oh, simple. When Pagan told me what had happened to you, I realized that you were right. Amico was dangerous, possibly a killer. And you were really my friend. You change friends fast, don't you? No woman's perfect. Even I can be fooled. You do all right. Do I, Jim? Any reason to think otherwise? I don't know. Ken is funny. Usually I've had command of situations like this. Now, shoes on the other foot. You don't like it? No. But it might be worthwhile. With a little encouragement. I expected a woman like you to take, not ask. Sometimes a woman like me might even beg. Now, too, Francis, the pattern's too deep. It... What is it, Ken? Those bells. You know what they are? Yes. Temple bells in the Chinese quarter. They peel that way when the fishing fleet is due in the next morning. Mm hmm. Which reminds me that I've still got some fishing to do tonight. Have you, Ken? What do you hope to catch? Not sure yet. I'll get something. If you're that certain, you must have a surefire bait. I have. $51 an ounce. from a flying boat, and at 5 a.m. in the morning. Relax, Pagan. Just keep your eyes peeled for a fishing boat. Fishing boat? But we already passed a whole flock of fishing boats. Well, yeah, they're due to dock at Macau at dawn. Uh, wait a minute. Huh? What do you see below there? Just another boat, falling behind the fleet a little. Or trying to catch up. Hang on to your hat, Pagan. We're going down to find out which. Oh! Fishing boat. Pull over and throw us a line. I'll explain on board. Did you have to land on the windy side of the fish boat? Mr. Thurston, already it doesn't smell so good in here. It'll be worse when we get aboard, Peg, huh? But why do we have to visit such a dirty thing anyway? Are we... Mr. Thurston, that boat, it's getting pretty close. Isn't it time it slowed down? Not if they intend to ram us. Ram us? Mr. Overboard, Thurston! Overboard, Peg, on. Jump. Francis. Francis Burton. Of course. You weren't really expecting to see anyone else, were you? No. Well, I must admit your man, Velschmidt, was surprised. Surprised? <laughs> you run us down. You pick us up. You, you... Uh, I don't get it. It's simple, Pagan. Miss Burton is the fish we were after. Huh? She had a pretty smart scheme for getting gold from the Philippines to Macau, using a fishing boat and timing the trip so it could put in with the fleet, getting the gold ashore undetected. It's a good scheme, Ken. How did you puzzle it out? I wasn't too tough. After I let Pagon pave the way by giving him information to sell, huh? as a result, my recent Damico thought I was the agent for the Philippine gold and tipped me off that it was expected this morning. And you helped by knowing that the fishing fleet was due to dock at dawn. But, but, but that doesn't make sense, Mr. X. She was the one who rescued you from Dr. D'Amico. Sure. By that time, she disclosed who she was and was afraid D'Amico might tip me off. So she had to get me away from him. But you aren't getting away, Francis. You forget yourself, darling. You may have escaped from my men in your hotel room, but there's no escape for you from here. You better check with Senor Leone about that, Francis. Senor Leone? Yeah. Of the Philippine Ministry of Finance. It's now about 5.29. He was supposed to make contact with us at 5.30. Say, say within the next minute or two, we should know whether... Mr. Thurston! Somebody's shooting at us! That was only a warning shot across the bowels. Fired by a Philippine gunboat and Senor Leone aboard. Looks like you won't dock at Macau after all, Francis. So, Ken. Very well. But you'll never dock anywhere again. Let me have that gun. I'll, I'll kill you. You hear? I'll, I'll kill now you. Now, let's have it. We did it. We did it. 
We got the gun. Yeah. You can come out from behind that table now, Pagan. Too bad I had to be rough, Francis. Oh, you... But your kind can't be handled any other way. To you, gold's an end in itself. Something to fatten a few purses instead of nourishing the bodies of starving people. D'Amico said peace and the welfare of mankind are only abstract principles. If you think so, just ask the people. They'll tell you. And how they'll tell you. Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, Mr. X goes to the timber country of the great Northwest, where the least of the dangers he encounters is a two-headed axe swung by Leon Belasco in the person of Pagan Zellschmidt. I think you'll find it a real thriller. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Thursday... For the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.